Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Time. Today's movie recap will be an action and comedy movie from 2022 called Freelance. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. The film opens with Mason Pettit sharing his story. He recounts a youth filled with uncertainty and a lack of direction. In college, he pursued a law degree but quickly found the routine dull and dropped out. Searching for meaning, he enlisted in the U.S. Army, where he discovered a strong sense of purpose and felt genuinely fulfilled for the first time. During his service, he also married Jenny, and together they welcomed a daughter. The plot thickens when Mason and his team are dispatched to Polonia to overthrow the dictatorial president, Juan Venegas. Tragically, their helicopter is hit by a missile. The crash kills most of his team and leaves Mason with severe, lasting back injuries. Following the disaster, the army discharges him, forcing him back into civilian life. With few options, Mason finishes his law degree and returns to practicing law, a decision that plunges him back into discontent and strains his family life. In a pivotal scene, Mason's former army general, Sebastian, unexpectedly visits him at his law office. The reunion is warm, but Sebastian's visit is business-related. He has founded a private security company, CDI, and wants Mason to join. He proposes that Mason protect an American journalist named Claire Wellington during an upcoming interview with President Venegas in Polonia. Initially, Mason vehemently refuses, blaming Venegas for the loss of his team and the end of his military career. However, enticed by a $20,000 offer and recognizing his dissatisfaction with his current role, Mason reluctantly agrees. Mason learns that Claire, once a celebrated reporter, fell from grace due to a professional mistake and has struggled to reclaim her career. This interview with Venegas represents a significant opportunity for her comeback. That evening, a domestic conflict erupts when Mason discovers that following his advice, his daughter struck a peer at school. Jenny, distraught over their daughter's actions and Mason's general unhappiness, expresses doubts about their future together. She announces her intention to move in with her parents. Mason interjects, deciding he should leave instead. He informs her of his new job as a security guard, which only fuels her frustration. Nonetheless, she acquiesces, hoping this change might resolve his struggles and salvage their deteriorating marriage. The following day, Mason meets up with Claire and they set off for Polonia. During the flight, Mason views some troll videos about Claire, catching her attention. She confronts him, fearing mockery, but he reassures her of his respect. Claire confides her ambitions to restore her professional reputation, emphasizing the rarity of her upcoming interview with Venegas, who hasn't spoken to the media in a decade. Upon landing, President Venegas welcomes them warmly, complimenting Claire's looks and kissing her hand, much to her discomfort. As they drive to the capital, Claire introduces Mason, whom Venegas acknowledges with a nod, having already researched his military background. The president and Claire engage in light conversation, sidelining Mason. Their journey takes a perilous turn when mercenaries ambush their vehicle. Mason swiftly assumes control, instructing Claire and Venegas to duck as he retaliates. His actions lead to a vehicular crash, but ensure the assailants are neutralized. Emerging from the wreckage, Mason's combat prowess leaves both Venegas and Claire astounded. While Venegas lavishes praise on him, Mason's frustration peaks. He insists they depart immediately, prioritizing safety over the interview. Claire protests, viewing the interview as a critical milestone for her career, but Mason counters, stressing the importance of her safety above all. Reluctantly, Claire agrees, and the trio makes their way into the nearby forest. From there, Mason contacts Sebastian, informing him of the ambush and his solo efforts to stop the attackers, leaving Sebastian shocked at the turn of events. Mason quickly informs Sebastian of their predicament in the forest and requests extraction. Sebastian promises that a helicopter will soon arrive with reinforcements. During this conversation, President Venegas asks to use the phone and contacts his nephew, George. George, shocked and fearful upon hearing his uncle's voice, had assumed his assassination plot via the mercenaries had succeeded. Venegas confronts George about the attack, revealing his awareness of the betrayal, but noting that George was merely a tool manipulated by higher powers. Venegas then proposes they head toward the capital. However, Mason interrupts, stating that they are about to be rescued by a helicopter and will soon depart. He then leads Claire away, leaving Venegas behind. As they wait, Claire pleads with Mason to allow her to complete her interview with Venegas. Mason, prioritizing her safety, dismisses her requests. Just as they spot the helicopter and feel a wave of relief, their hope turns to horror when armed mercenaries emerge from it and open fire. Mason and Claire dash back into the forest, dodging bullets. With his military skills still sharp, Mason neutralizes most of the attackers and in a desperate move, manages to shoot down the helicopter, stopping the assault. While Mason successfully dispatches most of the mercenaries, one of them catches up and brutally assaults him. 
Just as the mercenary is about to deliver a fatal blow, President Venegas unexpectedly intervenes and shoots the assailant, saving Mason. Soon after, George and his cohorts arrive, dismayed by the sight of the downed helicopter. The leader of the mercenaries, Cohor, arrives and berates George for his failure to assassinate Venegas. George tries to defend his actions, but Cohor, furious, threatens dire consequences if George fails again. Meanwhile, Venegas brings Mason and Claire to his hometown, where he is well regarded by the locals. Claire seizes the opportunity to interview Venegas, with Mason recording the conversation. During the interview, Claire probes the reasons behind the attacks on Venegas. He reveals that Polonia is rich in lanthanide, a rare mineral essential for modern technology. His refusal to let Western companies mine it, which would lead to environmental damage and financial losses for Polonia, has made him a target of international corporations and their mercenary forces. That evening, the trio joins a local celebration, enjoying a brief respite from their troubles. Later, Claire makes an advance on Mason, but he gently rejects her, affirming his commitment to his wife, Jenny. The next day, Mason calls Sebastian to discuss the mission's real motives. Sebastian confesses that he sent Mason with the dual intention of protecting Claire and potentially eliminating Venegas as revenge for past grievances, acting under pressure from powerful entities. Mason then speaks with his daughter and Jenny, who express their relief and desire for his safe return. Shortly afterward, as they prepare to depart, Cohor and his men storm the village. Mason and Venegas flee on horseback while Claire also attempts to escape but is captured by Cohor. Despite the grim situation, Venegas assures Mason that Claire will be safe as long as he lives. Reaching safety in a nearby town, Mason and Venegas discuss the true circumstances of the helicopter crash that marred Mason's military career. Venegas denies any involvement, suggesting that it was likely a case of friendly fire. He reveals his awareness of the assassination plot against him, indicating that Mason's mission was not a secret to him. This revelation adds complexity to Mason's mission, forcing him to reconsider his allegiances and the next steps on this perilous journey. The next morning, as Cohor and his troops descend on the town, Mason devises a plan to trade Venegas for Claire's safety. Venegas steps forward, appearing ready to surrender. Suddenly, the scene shifts dramatically when thousands of locals flood the streets, rallying to protect Venegas. With the mercenaries hired solely to target Venegas and unable to attack the civilians without repercussions, chaos ensues. Seizing the moment, Venegas, Mason, and Claire escape through an underground tunnel, leading them into the presidential palace. Inside the president's office, they encounter a frightened George, who is stunned by his uncle's unexpected appearance. Claire begins to live-stream the encounter on her phone. Venegas reassures his nephew, proposing they work together to safeguard their nation. Moved by his uncle's words, George tearfully embraces him, apologizing for his betrayal. The reconciliation is short-lived as one of the generals bursts in and fires at Venegas. In response, George shoots the general, who returns fire before both succumb to their injuries in a brief but fatal exchange. Miraculously, Venegas survives thanks to a bulletproof suit he was wearing. As Venegas mourns his nephew's death, soldiers surround him, their weapons drawn. Yet Venegas addresses them calmly, asserting his role as their leader and reminding them of their duty to protect the nation, not to serve as instruments of terror. At that moment, Cohor and more mercenaries arrive, but the soldiers, inspired by Venegas' leadership, turn against the intruders to defend their president. Amidst this, Sebastian arrives with additional troops to support Mason. A fierce shootout erupts, which Claire continues to live stream. During the melee, Cohor confronts Mason, boasting that he was behind the helicopter attack that had nearly killed him years before. Enraged, Mason engages in a violent struggle with Cohor. Just as Cohor gains the upper hand, Claire intervenes, striking Cohor with a devastating blow to the head. With the mercenary still posing a threat, Mason grabs a heavy weapon and eliminates the remaining assailants, while Claire captures the action on her phone. Claire's footage quickly goes viral, turning the tide of public opinion. In the aftermath, President Venegas holds a press conference where he announces his resignation and the scheduling of democratic elections for the following year. In the final scene, Mason returns to the U.S. and reunites with his family. He apologizes to Jenny, expressing his commitment to mend their relationship. Checking his bank account, Mason is stunned to find that Venegas has transferred $5 million to him as a token of gratitude. With a newfound sense of purpose, Mason decides to focus on spending more quality time with his family, cherishing the life he nearly lost. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care and see you next time.